Hello and welcome to Game Guru live broadcast number 105. You'll notice the subtle difference in my introduction. Not Game Guru Max live broadcast. This is Game Guru Classic live broadcast and Game Guru Max live broadcast. So come on, come all, everybody from both sides of the Game Guru community can start to enjoy extra content in our broadcasts moving forward. Ergo, the lovely new video that you just saw that introduced me to this little 30 minute session. But before I get too far into talking, I want to make sure that I have got a good sound test. Everyone can hear me. Yes, great. Everyone's anticipated my question. Thank you very much. Sounds like we're all hearing each other. Okay, the format has uh, uh, unchanged. The first part is a demo. Uh, in this case, demos. And then the second part is a Q&A where you get to ask the team or ask me any questions that you have. And I'll be happy to answer them in the second part, which is the Q&A. The first part, which I'm going to get into now, I'm dividing into Classic and Max. We'll start with Classic and then we'll move on to Max. And there's a couple of things I'd like to announce um, right off the bat. Anyone who's been looking at the GitHub, which is a source code repository, um, will notice that it's actually been updated. Game Guru Classic, um, it's been almost a two year hiatus, but now the latest version, the June Fixes update, its source code is now available on our GitHub. And I've got a website here, so I'm going to show you quickly that we've updated it. So it's all very recent now. We've updated the intro section. And if you were reading through it, some of you probably uh, have already found this out. And the rest of you, you're finding out right now. Whilst we were at it, we've improved the source code so it's now 64-bit compilable. What does that mean? It means all the way up to now, Game Guru Classic has been a 32-bit application, which means, that's, amongst other things, uh, system memory cap of about 3 gigabytes, but usable, probably 2.5 gigabytes. By moving to 64-bit architecture, not only are we supporting the underlying machine better, but that system memory cap is eliminated, which, of course, means you can have very, very large amounts of memory to run your games. And uh, we're looking forward to releasing a 64-bit version of that soon. We've got other things to do, more tests. Remember, it's not just a five-minute job going from 32 to 64-bit. We want to make sure that everything's running nice and smooth. I have opened the repository up. You can download it now if you like and compile it. I've already had it tested by third parties, and it works. So uh, you'll need a couple of things. You'll need the Game Guru Classic Steam Beta build. So make sure that's on your machine. And then go through the instructions and compile Game Guru Classic. And then the executable drops in, and it's a 64-bit executable. The reason I'm going on about Game Guru Classic is like, wait a minute, I thought you were developing Max. What's, what's all this about Classic? Well, it's, it's very important that we don't just race off ahead and leave everyone behind. What we want to make sure is that anyone who's got a project uh, on Game Guru Classic, so they've been making a game, some have been making a game for a year or two years, want to make sure that you can migrate over to Max at some point. And so there's still a lot of work to do in Classic to make sure that what you are working on, what you are creating, is in such of a format that you'll actually eventually be able to get it into Max. And at the same time, we're going to spend some time on Classic, um, doing a few tweaks here, a few tweaks there. More on that in the future broadcasts when I reveal a little bit more. But one thing I do want to mention, because it sort of snuck up on me this one, um, it's available in the game creator store, and it's created by, created by our old friend Preben, who was very instrumental in bringing Game Guru Max to life, has created something called the Game Guru Standalone Optimizer. And what does it do, I hear you ask? Well, it's rather clever, really. Um, once you've made a game, Game Guru Classic, and you've made your standalone executable, all you've got to do is run this optimizer, point it at your standalone folder, and it optimizes it. Specifically, it scans for all the opportunities to replace one file with a different kind of file, which obviously makes it nice, uh, more memory efficient. But in one of my tests, if you remember, the, there was an example called The Big Escape in Game Guru Classic that came out of the box. It takes on my computer 20 seconds to load from clicking the start button to running the game 20 seconds. After running the optimizer, it was 13 seconds. 
So it's a definitely a substantial, and the bigger scape's not a huge level, relatively small level. So you can imagine the savings you're going to get uh, by speeding up your uh, loading time. And I suspect it's much more memory efficient as well, although I've not run that diagnostic. So if you're interested in it, just go to the Game Creator Store and tap out standalone in the search box, and you'll find this here. It's from Plemsoft, which is Preben. And uh, please do support it, because I think it's a great idea. And I expect there'll be a few tweaks down the road as well if this tool is supported. So I just wanted to make mention of that. So without further ado, um, also just before I run on into to Max, if you are asking questions, stick a question mark at the end. Answers will be provided during the demo from my team members, and I will answer any that can be answered during the Q&A. Wanted to mention that, kind of so excited, but classic, kind of forgot to make mention of the question mark. Super important when you're scrolling through a live chat. So without further ado, let's see what's going on in Maxland. Okay, so this Friday, remember last Friday we had a bit of a holiday, so no update then, but this Friday, yes, we have an update for you. So in two days time, what I'm demonstrating today, You'll be able to see some of this on Friday. And there's two things. There is a new demo in the hub called Operation Amazon. This was the uh, the third place winner of a recent uh, hype map real world competition. And uh, I've made a few tweaks, but what I want to do is just have a quick run through this game. Now, we've had some chats on Discord, etc. We're saying, Lee, will you stop just spending like hours and hours just playing through somebody else's demos, why don't you show us more about the tool? Well, I do think it's, a, it's at the moment, I still think it's a valuable thing. Let me just show you this intro, which I think is pretty cool. So, um, hopefully you can hear me fine. I'm just checking my sound levels. Yes, I think I'm okay. Um, what I really liked about this, um, and you know, there's a sort of theme going with some of the other winners of the competition, that video intro, just setting the game up and the story. What I liked about this one is there was a really good attempt to transition from, and you see this in something like the, uh, the Grand Canyon Adventure, um, is, when the video ends, the player actually starts in exactly the same position as where the video ended. Now, it's our fault that the game engine doesn't create that transition super smooth. There's a little jiggling around going on, both the start transition at the end. But I think that's something that we can tweak on with the game engine. So you get really nice smooth transitions. So if you want to do a cutscene video and merge into the gameplay in the real real time rendering, I think it's a great ambition and it's something that we're going to help you with. So I'm going to run through this demo quickly, as in the previous two demos, and you know, if there's a big uproar, Lee, please stop showing demos, you know, shout, scream from the heavens, if everyone is in unanimous in agreement, and we'll just look at tool stuff more, then that's fine as well. But I do like the idea that I can play games and maybe make some critique. So on this game, we have lots of allies, look, they're all following me, um, and they will continue to follow me. Now I think if we try and run this way... I don't think that is the right direction. <laughs> That's really good. I like the idea that instead of just, you know, text messages or blocking people in with a wall, using audio as a cue for navigation. There isn't a radar with an arrow showing where we're going. But yeah, the idea that can use all of the media types to help you with the game creation. So the, uh, the objectives are, it's quite a way off. I just want to make sure all my allies are obediently following me. Of course, with the map, there's some dots. You should be able to just see it without having to constantly turn around. But I just want to make sure that they're all with me. The reason will become clear a little bit. Because the base we're going to come up to is pretty crammed with soldiers. Um, so yeah, I think they're all still with me. Okay, let's see, where are we? There! Oh crap. <laughs> right. Checkpoint. Very important. I had to add that one. You're not allowed here. Hey, you! Yes. 
Okay, I just remembered something, people. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? Thing I forgot. Weapons. I ran out of the tent without my weapons. <laughs> I don't know whether I should just run all the way back or just start the game again. In fact, you know what I'm going to do is run the game again. <sighs> the reason is I may not actually find my way back. I've only played this level, I think, two or three times. I made a few changes. Switch into a my better weapon. Right, guys. Take two. Bit embarrassing, though. <laughs> but as I say, um, spend most of my time coding, managing things, etc. And I've remembered, because I thought I'd give clue to self, head towards the sun. Head towards the setting sun. That's um, If I was adding more to this and iterating it, obviously it's not my level, but if, I'd probably have some instruction like that. You know, head towards the setting sun, soldier, or something like that. But that little green flashy thing, I added that because there was no checkpoint. There it is. And I kind of wanted a checkpoint. So all my guys are uh, still with me. Cool. Where's my checkpoint? There you go. Very important to have a checkpoint because I don't want to keep running all the way from the tent all the way to here. So I added that. My bad. Oh, my good. Now let's have a bit of a, have a, bit of a battle. Okay. Get that barrel first. There. Oh, come on, allies. Let's do this thing. Yeah, baby. Okay, very, very loud, which is why I wasn't trying to do narration. Um, as you saw, the objective was to collect three laptops in the middle of the base. What I really liked about it is I had all my allies with me, charging through, taking their own paths, choosing their own targets, and that combat music kicking in at just the right time to pick it up. I thought, it's a small level, but everything was right. It, it f sounded good, it looked good. The setting sun created a nice colour over the whole game. and. You know, it's a demo, so it wants to be nice and sharp and sweet, and I really like it. It's called Operation Amazon. You can check that out on Friday's build and uh, have some fun seeing if you can actually complete it with all four um, of your allies intact. I've played it, like I said, a few times, and sometimes they all get wiped out, and I'm on my own running out of ammo very quickly. So it's, it's a good indicator of good game balance when it can swing both ways. Uh, based on how you play the game. So that's the demo. Now, before I annoy everyone who doesn't want to see any more demos, I also have some other stuff to show. I'm going to show it right now.
and it's related to something that we've been working on called the Animation Booster Pack. What is the Animation Booster Pack? Well, it's um, we have lots and lots of animations in Game Guru out of the box. However, um, what's this person doing? So that's me, zombie. Um, however, let me just make sure that behavior. Yeah, the zombie attack. There's there's always a need for more, and so Merblosser has kindly created lots and lots and lots of animations. And we've been modifying the software to let you use those animations in cleverer and cleverer ways. I think last week I showed you how you can, if you've got the booster pack, change the stances of things like the rifle and the shotgun and the pistol so the weapons are lower down. This time I want to show you something a bit more precise. Now if I run this, typical desert biome, and I've dropped in a zombie, and the zombie's coming up to me, Another thing that I've added is more um, sh camera shake on melee combat. So when someone hits you or punches you or uses a sledgehammer or something, watch how the camera slightly shakes when I get attacked. So there you go, you've got the hit. And all when you pull back, having been brain eaten, you get a shake as well. But that ain't what I want to show you. What I want to show you is precision over animations. Now, let me show you. This is more for advanced users, but I think it's super cool, and you get to see how, how many animations you get in the animation booster pack. What I'm going to do is bring up the importer and choose any old zombie. So, Granny Moldy, perfectly good zombie. And if the animation tool in the model importer, you've already got all of these animations that come with uh, characters. These are all built in. It's a female zombie with attacking and walking and dying and reacting and stuff like that. Um, but what you can do now is you can go and find some additional animations. Find it in the booster section. And look at all the things you can get now. You can have, these are act, just general activities, so applauding, bowing, kneeling, some rituals, stocking shelves, all the things that you might want your characters in your game to do. Things that when you're sitting down on a chair, just, um, I actually shared something on Discord where uh, all the soldiers were acting like zombies and all the zombies were sitting at the table <laughs> looking really fed up. <laughs> and those animations existing there. You've got different kinds of corpse poses if you want just scattering corpses everywhere. You've got animations to control that. You've got some ground activity. This is the one I want to show you, but I'll come back to that. And of course, different kinds of idols, hanging around, looking bored, warming your hands in fires, all this kind of stuff. Lots of talking, conversation, animations. The list, it to doth go on. And more melee attack styles. I'll show you a little bit uh, what to do with those in the future. But for now, this is a really quick demonstration. So I'm going to pick um, three animations. We're going to pick the um, Sleeping idol, so characters asleep. I also want uh, a character that can get up, so that animation is getting up, and I also want one where the character is um, laying down, and I think we'll make this animation a bit faster. Like so, and if we're happy with that, then I'm just going to save it out. Sleep me, sleep time. And then export that. Now, if you ever use the model importer, this is pretty standard stuff. But here's the tricky part. Or not the tricky part, the part you kind of need to know. So this is the character, and it's a perfectly good character, you can drop it in. But as you may know, the model importer is not finely tuned for exporting characters. We have the character creator for that. But what you can do, having created that character, remember the zombie we had before, which had this zombie attack behaviour? Um, oh, another thing, a lot of work's been going on since last week. I can immediately set character attack to that zombie, and look, it immediately changes the pause to the um, the pistol. If I go to rifle, instantly changes to the rifle pose, back to pistol. If I did melee attack, boom, gets ready for melee attack. And similarly, go back to zombie, then you got the more agitated zombie animation. Just another thing that helps you figure out that the behavior is now controlling control of weapons, it's controlling animations. But this is good control, play animation. This is a really nice behavior. You'll get this on Friday as well. 
And if we read the description, which is how you determine what behavior is doing instead of the pretty picture, when the player is within the range, it will play an action play, uh, stored in the object, and then loop uh, using an action loop animation. When further away, it will play the idle play and then loop um, animation using the default animations. It will also play sound if triggered. And so what you see here is at the bottom, animation set is just the regular female default animation for zombies. But remember that character that we just, our own character? Right. Well, if we go find it, and you'll find all writables in the writable area. So go into user bank, it should be, there you go, sleep time, and it's the DBO. Cool thing about uh, animations uh, and managing them, you can actually pull all the animations from an object. So this is just running through all the animations for the zombie right now. But here, this is where we get to play with it. So when we approach the zombie, I think we want them to stand up. Once they're stood up, it does zombie idle. When you walk away from the zombie, we want that zombie to lay down. And then once they finish that play of the laying down animation, then loop that. So if we run that, uh, this is a really clever script, because it knows I'm far away, so the zombie goes to sleep. If I get a bit close, within that range parameter that you saw, then it plays the get up animation, and then it goes to zombie idle. And as I get further away again, does the sit down, oh, sorry, the lie down animation, and goes back to sleep. Now, I'll be the first to admit, this isn't going to solve all your problems when it comes to game logic. It really is just um, an example. And if you want to, in fact, whilst we have time, because I'm going to make time, let me show you what that looked like. Playanimation.lua. This is it. It's not a complicated script. Um, and maybe I'll do some more YouTube videos on how to use the behavior editor. The reason I've not done it so far is I'm changing the interface for this. This is great for me and for anyone who really wants to get their hands dirty with um, visual scripting, but it's not the most user friendly. And having used it for many, many months, I know there's a better way of doing it. I know all the important bits, where all the buttons need to be, what you need to see, how fast to create instructions, conditions, and actions. So I have a much better interface in mind but for now let me just show you what this play animation behavior looks like uh, initially it just sets the target as the player target the enemy which of course is me and then hands over to a state called handle animation first thing it does it plays the idle play at the end of that animation it loops idle loop when you're within range it will play a sound effect then it will play action play and when that animation ends it will continually loop action loop. When you are outside of the designated range, it will stop any sounds that may be playing and return to the beginning, rinse and repeat. Getting closer, one set of animations, get further away, another set of animations. And so not a very complicated script at all. If I were to change this to the character attack and run, Look at this, look how big it is, I'm backing away, it's still going, still going, still going, still going. It's still um, organized, I can still manage all this relatively quickly, but as I said, I think there is a better way to condense sort of the overview, at least, of, of all of this and then being able to navigate quickly, to make changes very quickly, and create these logic blocks quicker as well. Um, but that's just a little bit of a glimpse as to what may be happening in the near future. But for now, that's what I wanted to show you, the work on um, the extra animation capabilities to support the uh, animation booster pack, which will be released shortly. Okay, so that is what I wanted to show today. I hope you like the look of all that. Without further ado, let's see what's going on in questions and answers land. Okay, I have my live chat off window. You can't see it, but I can. Um, if Zach is around, which he is, he posts the first orange, which means I'm going to start answering from here onwards. These are the questions that did not find an answer, and now I'm happy to answer them for everyone to hear and to watch later on once it goes up on YouTube. 
So, will terrain painting blending be getting any announcements in the near future? Classic currently has much better terrain blending than Max. Terrain blending is an art form, I admit that. Uh, but let me just show you the finesse you can do. So let's say you did a pill, like so, like that. And then you try to blend it, which is this com command. Look, it wipes it out almost immediately. That isn't the only thing it can do. You can actually reduce the sculpt speed right down. And now you've got, let me get right even more. And that way, it's much more forgiving. It doesn't wipe out immediately. Now, if you want more options in the blend, um, post it in the issues board as a feature request. And yeah, uh, we can just add more controls, more properties. What is it specifically? Not some general vague idea. Specifically, what does it look like? How does it work? What are the ranges? Etc. Etc. And we'll be happy to read that out. And if it's, wow, that's a really good thing. We totally need that. Then you'll find it in Max before too long. Here's a question. Uh, Y'all planning on adding extra water planes? I think it's really needed. It's not in the short term. I agree. I'm calling them water volumes. So the idea is you've got your, your, your water table, which is like your ocean. Um, and then if you're up on a high mountain, you might want a lake. That's really high up, but you also want the sea down below. A water volume will be a box or a 3D rectangle. And when you're inside it, you're underwater. You're in a body of water. And when you're above it, looking down, it actually intersects the terrain scenery. And you can see nice shiny water using the same shader as the water down below. So I have a very firm idea of what it needs to be. But no, it's not on the super short term radar. But I do see it happening at some point. Here is a question, uh, uh, one from Zach. Um from before I think. Will the 64-bit classic version be released on Steam or do we have to compile it on our own version? I'll absolutely be releasing it on Steam. We need to do lots and lots of tests on it because it is a wholesale replacement of a binary we've been using for seven years. I want to make sure it's right. So don't worry, you don't have to worry about compiling repository source code. All you got to do is wait. Let us do all the testing and all the hard work and then you'll get an update and a blog saying it's now 64-bit supported and you can crack on and make even larger levels in Game Guru Classic. Should also solve a lot of stability issues. That was a result of running out of system memory as well. So it just sounds fancy saying 64-bit, but you're also getting nice stability as well. Question, question. Uh, will VR have manual reloading of weapons? The pistol, will there be functionality to manually put the clip into the gun and pull back the slide? to load it. I'm going to take a lot of inspiration from Half-Life Alex. It was a really great experience. It wasn't a huge game, but what there was of it just felt really well thought out. The movement, the, the finding and using and operating of weapons. So, not necessarily plagiarism, but certainly being inspired based on the weapons that we've got and what we need them to do in VR. So, I'll be as surprised as you, but I think, yeah, in those general terms, I would like... um. Instead of it just point and shoot, that you do more with the weapon in virtual reality. But watch this space. It really uh, hasn't been determined yet. Another question. Well, will custom terrain assets such as trees, grass and textures be a feature? Uh, custom, to us, yeah, custom terrain assets such as trees, grasses and be a feature. Um, it's not on the short, short, short radar. But yeah, we, we absolutely need that. Um, it's It's great that we can provide you with you know, top quality assets in this area, and you've got enough to do multiple biomes, etc. But I know there are some really keen artists and creatives out there who just want their own trees, their own grasses, their own textures, their own terrains, etc. Um, so I absolutely hear you. And just for those who don't really know what we're talking about, if you look at this, see these textures, these are what we've provided. There's, there isn't a button down here which says, add uh, our own texture. Similarly, and uh, you'll see that, you know, we always move forward with the particle editor, which received some super bad press on Steam, by the way. We actually, because we add this, we worked on add new particle. So you can actually have custom content, uh, custom particles added this way. And we just haven't got rounds to doing the adding your own terrain textures and then adding your own grass types and then adding your own tree types. But uh, in terms of the interface, you'd see it as an add Duh, 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 and then you can import your own. The thing is, you know, you've got to prepare them yourself. And, and certainly for trees, there's certain rules that need to be followed. So we're going to create a guide to a company that 
uh, addition and hopefully um, once it becomes established you'll start to find that we'll provide out of the box stuff but then you can find more trees grasses and terrain textures on things like the game creator store so i'm looking forward to seeing that um, eco e e ecosystem expand too okay another question from before can the camera shake be disabled if it's not needed uh good question actually that's a great idea super easy to do as well uh post it in the issues board put it down as a feature request and assign it to me along the lines of can we have a tick box in the play start marker so there's a start marker you've got things like player speed Swimming speed, health and vulnerability, health regeneration, weapons and ammo, multiplayers, weapon slot preferences. Down here is where we'll put the tick box. Heartbeat sound, screen blood, damage indicator, flashlight disabled, and underneath that, camera shake disabled. So, great idea. Well done. Okay. Next, I'm looking for a question mark, really, and I want to have scrolled past, brutally scrolled past anything that doesn't have a question mark in it, so I apologise. Here is a question, and then backed up with a question in square brackets. What's the restriction on making a demo game like Sones Asex ETC? <sighs> There's no real restriction. I, th I suppose what you mean is if you were to make a demo game that we then put into our hub, what are the restrictions? Well... Use Operation Amazon as a good example. It, it, it was completed in about 8 to 10 minutes um, and it used some very interesting ideas um, in terms of the visuals and the video intros and the sound cues. And uh, did you notice that the character was a custom character with the balaclava on? Those last touches to bring something out that isn't demonstrated in the other demos. I think that's probably what we'll be looking for in the future. Demos that show something else rather than something that repeats what's already in the hub because it's really just about showing people different things that you can do right now with Game Guru Max. Uh, so yeah, unique is good, uh, but not like a four hour <laughs> marathon game because it's not really the purpose of the demos. It's really just a little tasters of different ideas. Here's a question from Tom. How do we uh, disable the hard-coded 3000 AI distance limit? It is making it impossible to have long distance snipers and also making guy a look stationary when looking through sniper scope. Yeah, um, there is one way. Let me show you how to do that. So this character, even though they have character attack ranges um, somewhere, yeah, reload range, flank, combat time, hearing range, stuff like that. If you look into her developer settings, which can be activated in the settings area, there is something called, if it's if it's here it is always active set this tick this one and this character will be moving around running its script no matter how far away that character is so that as a um, it had been in there f since day one but very well hidden don't you think <laughs> also let us know if some of these which are hidden away in developer settings ought to be in the general section in character settings i've often thought that this one um is immobile where are you there you go is immobile i think that should be a general setting because it's super useful if you want say um a character just to stay put not even move slightly uh, and objects to not like fly off and, and try and respond to its physics you know you can have an object that has physics but is immobile will just lock it in place as a kinetic uh, physics item Anyway, I digress. Do let me know if you think something should be moved from settings into general. Okay, question next is from Dennis. Q <laughs> for the chat. Is anyone in here able to run Max on a Radeon 6000 series card? Uh, I use Passmark. So go and tap your card name in Passmark and see what it comes out with. If you're something like... Um, eight, is it... 2000 or 8000 anyway type out the gtx 970 for a base number and if your number is higher than that then you're good to go with game guru max if you're substantially lower maybe the radion 6000 is substantially lower then you're going to have problems running all of the demos at full speed okay here's a question from 3com if custom terrain paint textures will come does you require oh, sorry does you will include alpha channel Terrain painting alpha channel, why would you want that? I mean, as soon as you set it to semi-transparent, what's underneath the terrain? <laughs> well, actually, there's the sky box underneath the terrain, then we're not really ready to just reveal 
the sky. So do let us know in if it's a feature request into the issues board why you would want semi-transparent terrain textures because it effectively is just a height field. There is literally nothing underneath the terrain right now and nor will there be, I suspect. Okay, next question. And I'm going to find it in the hands of... AZ Graphics. Is it possible to save project settings like advanced and developer once instead of changing it every time we open a project? It was a decision, a design decision that uh, we need to warn you in triplicate if you activate features you're not ready for. So settings, when you go to advanced, you get a warning. When you go to developer, you get a warning. But I know what you mean. Once you've agreed to those things and you've set additional developer options and maybe you want to... Uh, this uh, debug mode, things like that. You want to keep these. If I leave the software and come back, then that switches off, that switches off, and you get your warnings all over again. I kind of agree too. Um, but it was a design decision. If you think that design decision was completely wrong, and you want to make sure that once you've agreed once, then you keep that forever. The reason it wasn't that, the reason it was a de design decision, is what if you accidentally did it, and now you've messed up your UI, and you can't get it back, and you don't know how. So we kind of retracted it back because there are more standard users than there are advanced and developer mode users. Okay, this uh, chat, live chat is, is heating up and I'm losing my um, last questions. So I have to scroll up a little bit. Found it. This is from Diamon. Uh, when will the DLC particle editor actually let us save, export the particle we make? It should do. Um, yeah, super simple actually. Just go to particle editor and give yourself a particle you might like so that looks really good it's very good in fact click this little disk icon save and then it's called bounce it export to game guru max we're finished with the particle editor add a particle element go into particles add new particle users bounce it was the one we've got and there you go lovely particles so that's how you do it um, if you're having problems and some button is missing then it sounds like a bug and we'll be able to help so post it as an issue as a bug and I'll be happy to help Morph Productions can we adjust gravity? No you can switch it on and off let's get rid of some of these particles before we get to and you can go as well I'll pick a barrel like so if you go into general there's something called affected by a gravity, you can switch that off, run the game, <laughs> and uh, yeah, this the rest of the world has gravity. I've got gravity. Our barrel, on the other hand, it doesn't have gravity. Um, but I suppose the question is can we set the strength of gravity? I think it's a good idea. We'll probably put it into environmental effects um, because it is sort of affects the whole world. And so there could be things like behaviours where the barrel can have its own gravity control. But there's, all, there's such a thing as taking things too far. So maybe some clarity, post it as an issue, if it's a feature request or whether it's like you absolutely need to control the strength of gravity. But remember, when you change gravity, everything changes and you can mess a lot of stuff up, like play a jump height and hurt and stuff like that. Here's a question from Tapman. Bigger enemy need to hit you harder, can we make the shake stronger? Yeah, we've got some different things, like if you get shot, it's more of a piercy thing, so the shake is much reduced, but a clobbering, bludgeoning, melee sort of thing, then the camera shake is higher. And the camera shake is proportional to actual damage received. Now, I suppose the request here, and again for the issues board, is can we have a modifier? So you can, for a particular um, influence to the player, modulate that shake but then making it less or stronger as you see fit um, when you do post the issue for that where exactly would you like the control what would you like in control is it a per character thing or is it a general thing based on different kinds of damage the player may receive the camera shake is really just about player damage um, to, re to represent that kind of injury um, so where would you like to see that control if we were to add it 
just checking the clock. 43 minutes into the hour, but we started three minutes in, so that's 40 minutes. That's a good chunk of broadcast for this week. I'll answer two more questions, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to scoot off. Um, the weather's a bit nicer today in terms of coolerness. <laughs> it was pretty scorchy two days ago, but I still need my aircon back on very soon. So who gets the last two questions? Someone who hasn't asked me a question before, I think will prefer. I'm just going to scroll up because the questions are flowing in um quite a lot actually it'd be a shame to stop answering questions but i have to scroll back quite a lot now um yeah have i lost my place completely or am i looking at some completely different questions and answers okay yeah 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 i think i just scrolled too far apologize for the delay here we go the question from someone who hasn't asked one yet. Um, oh, Synchro says, if you're going to select always active, it does not work. Please post as issue in issues board. I didn't know it didn't work. It should absolutely work and give you uh, infinite range for your character behaviours. Um, who gets a question? Uh, we're going to have to dig down a bit further now because everyone who's asking questions has already asked one. Answered one, I should have asked one. Yes, asked one. <laughs> Finally, Monkey Frog Studio asks, how does he misunderstand so many questions? Um, I don't understand that question. <laughs> because I read the question and an answer pops into my head and uh, before I get to super analyse the answer, I just vocalise it. Um, but yeah, uh, let me know if the Q&A is, is not useful and all the answers that I provide are wrong. And maybe we can do something else with our weekly broadcast. Please let me know. And the last question uh, is from... Oh, no, that's not a question. That's some sarcastic reply, which I, I think is perfectly acceptable. Okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, looking for a question mark. I'm almost at the end of the live chat, and I've just hit the bottom of the live chat. And there are no more question marks from people who haven't asked a question. So I'm going to scroll all the way back up to... The last question that I did answer, which was related to shake strength. And I'm going to find the next question from people who have asked a question before. And it's from Moth Productions. Is there controller support? There isn't controller support. And I suppose what you're asking is game controllers like an Xbox or a PlayStation controller or a PC compatible uh, game controller. There isn't any controller support for that. It's in the code. It's just not exposed in Game Guru Max right now. We will be looking at game controller support at the same time we're looking at VR controller because there's an important need to map what the buttons and the joysticks and the analogs and the digitals and the triggers do in the game itself. And so you need a good key mapping solution, both for virtual uh, VR controllers and just for regular game controllers. So we're going to tackle all that in one big bag. So when you see VR rear its head in the future broadcast also expect to see game controller coming along for a ride <laughs> so keep an eye out for that so yeah um sorry for anyone who didn't get a question answered i think we got most of them which is pretty good i will be back next wednesday um at 7 p.m bst look out for the build in two days time on friday I hope to get it out for about 4 p.m., but it might delay a little if I want to do some extra testing to make sure it's super solid before you get your hands on it. So until next Wednesday, thanks very much for your kind attention. I'll speak to you all next week. Goodbye.